Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander Morer with Alpha Star Academy, and today we're going to be discussing the problem milk exchange. In this problem, we are given a circle of cows passing milk for m minutes. Each cow passes one unit of milk per minute until they run out of milk, uh, and some cows pass to the left while other cows pass to the right. The effect of this is that the cows are divided into groups which pass milk towards some central point. So for example, if I have a chain of cows passing to the right and a chain of cows passing to the left, the flow of milk you can see represented by these arrows is going to wind up in some central location. The two cows at the very center of this, center, uh, the, uh, of this chain are going to pass milk continuously back and forth between them. This is going to have the effect of meaning that all of their buckets are always full. So any milk that gets passed to them is going to get wasted, right? Because they can't store it, the buckets are full. So this means that every unit of milk that this cow passes to the right is going to get wasted, and every unit of milk that this cow passes to the left is going to get wasted. And our objective is to determine the amount of milk that does not get wasted after m minutes pass. And one idea is to just naively simulate this, to store an array containing all the milk amounts and then just loop for n minutes, trying to calculate how much milk is, at the, is saved at the end of the process. The problem with this is n and m are both very large, so you'd likely get a TLE error for most test cases. And we can see in the scoring, you will get partial credit for this solution, but you will not get full credit. So we want a solution that goes much faster than sort of the naive simulation approach. And one way to do this is to come up with a math formula that immediately calculates for us the amount of milk getting wasted. And to come up with a math formula, for most USICO problems, you want to understand what are the constraints on your problem. So one constraint on the amount of milk getting wasted is how much milk these cows have, right? So all of the milk owned by these cows can potentially get wasted if the process runs for long enough. Likewise, all of the milk owned by these cows can potentially get wasted, right? If it arrives at the center, it will get wasted. So that's one constraint, just the amount of milk the cows have. And the second constraint is the amount of time that passes, right? So from the uh, left passing cows, this cow only passes one unit of milk per minute. And from the right passing cows, this cow only passes one unit of milk per minute. So that means from the right, only one, one unit of milk per minute can be wasted. And from the left, only one unit of milk per minute can be wasted. So per group, so uh, right, there can be multiple groups in the string, but per group, we can calculate the amount of milk wasted um, as the following. It's gonna be the minimum of the milk stored in the right passing cows, except the last R, right? So the last R doesn't count because its bucket is always full, like was mentioned earlier. Um, and then we take a minimum of this value and M, right? So if not very many minutes have passed, not much milk can be wasted. If a lot of milk minutes have passed, then a lot of milk can get wasted. Um, and then very similar formula for the cows passing to the left. The only difference is now we're going to exclude the first L because that's the L in the center. So for the right passing cows, we exclude the last R. For the left passing cows, we exclude the first L. And once again, we're taking the minimum of the amount of milk stored by those cows and M because M puts an upper bound on the amount of milk that can possibly be passed to the center. So this is our formula for calculating the amount of milk wasted per group. So our solution idea is going to be basically loop over all of these groups, count the amount of milk stored uh, to the right, take the minimum of it with M, count the amount of milk stored with the left passing cows, take the minimum of that with M, and then sum up over all groups. So before we do that, let's just dive into a quick example. Um, just to make sure we understand what's going on here. So here we have seven cows and M is two. Uh, we have four cows passing to the right and three cows passing to the left. So just one group. Um, and the amount of milk stored by the right passing cows that can potentially get wasted is four. Uh, so all of these cows can eventually waste their milk. 
Um, and we can see that the total there is four. For the left passing cows, the total milk stored by cows that can waste their milk is one plus eight is nine, right? We're excluding these two cows because their milk, they're just always gonna pass to each other, preserving exactly the same amount of milk they've always had. So here, the milk lost is going to be the minimum of four, the amount of milk they have, and two, the amount of time that has passed. And for the left cows, it's going to be the minimum of nine, the amount of milk they have, and two, the amount of time that has passed. So we get four. So our final answer would be the total amount of milk minus four. If we change M, so let's say we change M to be six, then this value changes, right? More milk will get, get wasted. So now we're taking the minimum of four and six. So now this says four units of milk get lost. All of the milk to the, for the right passing cows gets wasted. And then some of the milk, six units of the milk for the left passing cows gets wasted. So we end up with 10 units of milk wasted, right? So four from these cows and 10, or sorry, six from these cows leading to a total of 10. So this is what we want to do just on a bigger scale. One thing that makes this problem a little tricky is that because the cows are in a circle, it is not guaranteed to us that the groups uh, start nicely at the beginning of the string, right? So here, um, how many groups are there? It might look like there are multiple groups, uh, but there's actually just one and it starts right here. So this cow passes to the right to this cow, um, which then passes to the right to this cow, this cow passes to the left to this cow, and this cow passes to the left to this cow. So this restructured uh, is actually equivalent to something more like this. So because the cows are in a circle, this makes the problem a little bit more challenging because uh, we're not guaranteed that the first value is going to be the start of our group. Um, one way of combating this is that if you take a string with multiple groups in it, so let's just take a look at this string, um, it's guaranteed that um, a group is going to start after an occurrence of LR. So if we have LR as a substring, um, if we search for the, uh, an occurrence of LR, then we know that the, that's going to be the start of one of the groups, right? Because groups always go right, left, right, left. So we find an LR, that means one group just ended and one group is just starting. So we can, um, rather than starting at the beginning of our string, one of the things we're gonna need to do in this program is we're going to have to start in the middle of the string uh, based on one of the occurrences of this LR, just so, to make sure we're starting at the beginning of one of these groups rather than uh, just arbitrarily at the beginning of the string. So this is one tricky part of this question, um, but let's dive into the code. So first of all, we're just gonna read in our inputs. So let's take a look at what our inputs are. The first value is N, the next value is M, right? So N is the number of cows, M is the number of minutes, and then S is going to be our string of cows. Um, and note that it's not guaranteed that they're gonna be L's and R's. If they're just R's or they're just L's, then actually all of the milk uh, gets preserved. And this is gonna be one edge case that we're gonna to wanna to make sure our program handles well, um, but uh, I'll leave that uh, up to you. So uh, for step two, uh, we're going to want to find the location of the first group, right? So this is just the comment that I was saying earlier here about the, the, the group isn't guaranteed to start at the beginning of the string. So to find the location of this first group, we can just find the substring LR, and that's going to give us uh, wherever the first group is starting. Um, once we found the location of the first group, we're ready to sort of start looping over all of the groups and summing up using this formula. So um, we're gonna have a couple of helper variables to store our information. 
the first helper variable we want is lost milk. This is going to be the total amount of lost milk over the course of our program, right? So uh, there are going to be multiple groups we're looking at. And for each group, we're going to increase lost milk by the amount that particular group is losing. Uh, the current milk variable, on the other hand, is going to store the amount of milk that a current interval is losing, right? So uh, we have an interval of Rs or we have an interval of Ls. And this current milk just stores up the amount of milk that that interval um, can possibly lose. And the idea is we're going to take the minimum of current milk with M in order to calculate the true amount of milk lost by any interval. Great. So now let's take a look at the main chunk of code here. So um, I'm choosing to implement this in a while loop. If you're in Java or C++, you can probably just do a for loop here. but Python for loops work slightly differently, um, but it works identically to a for loop um, where I have some counter variable and I'm going to increase that counter variable each loop. We'll talk a little bit why about why I wanted to use a while loop here later, um, but the, the thing that I start by doing is I'm going to increase milk, uh, current milk by the amount of milk um, of the current cow, right? So this is the amount of milk in the current cow. What's going on here is we are starting at some value uh, predetermined in step two, and then we're just adding i to it. So this is um, however many cows we have traveled so far added to the first cow we looked at. And then we're taking everything mod n. So all of our arrays, all of our strings here are length n. So the mod n just ensures that we're never going to get any integer over or uh, array uh, out of bounds errors. So once we've uh, added the amount of milk from the current cow, we're going to look and see if the interval of r's or l's is about to end, right? So we're going to uh, loop over all of the r's. If we're about to switch to a new letter, that tells me it's time to sum up the amount of milk uh, from that interval. If the interval is ending in an R, that means I'm about to sum up the right passing cows. Uh, so I want to make sure I'm excluding the amount of milk from the right, uh, the last rightmost cow. So if I'm about to sum up the milk from the right passing cows, I'm going to remove the amount of milk from the current cow. This is just making sure that I'm only including milk from cows that are not the last cow. Likewise, I'm also going to increase i by one. This has the effect of in the future, if I'm ending an interval of r's, that means I'm about to begin an interval of l's. And if I want to avoid counting the amount of milk, from this first L cow, the best way to do that is just to skip over that cow. So that's why I've chosen this sort of loop situation. This I plus one just lets me skip over the first L cow if I know that I'm about to enter an interval of L cows, right? Because for the R cows, I want to exclude the last R cow. For the L cows, I want to exclude the last, the first L cow. So this line of code has the effect of excluding the last R cow. This line of code has the, ex the effect of excluding the first L cow for the next interval. And then I just increase lost milk by our formula, right? So here we have the current amount of milk in our interval. So that would be something like this, where we take 1 plus 2 plus 1. And then M, that's just the amount of time passing. So we increase our lost milk by however much milk was lost by this interval. And then we proceed on to the next interval, resetting current milk to zero. Then uh, I increase i by one, just saying, OK, I want to look at the next cow. And then I continue looping until I've looked at all cows. So once I've summed over all cows, then lost milk is going to store the total amount of milk I've lost 
over the course of this process. So, so that's all that's left is to calculate the total amount of milk. So total milk is just going to be the sum of this um, array A, right? So S is the string that stores the left cows. A is their amounts of milk. So if I just sum over A, I get the amount of milk um, total. If you don't know how to sum using the built-in sum functions, you could always just loop over all of the values and sum it up manually. And then the final step is we're going to take the difference between total milk and the amount of milk we lost, and that's going to be our remaining milk. So we just print out total milk minus lost milk, and that completes the program. All right, let's upload it to the grading server and see if it passes all the test cases. So we can see here, all test cases are looking good so far. And now we've got all the test cases. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.